Honorable Justice N. V. Ramana, Chief Justice of India, Mrs. Shivmala Ramana, family members of Justice Ramana, my esteemed colleagues, brother and sister judges of the Supreme Court, Mr. Tushar Mehta, learned Solicitor General for India, Mr. Vikas Singh, President, Supreme Court Bar Association, the Honorable Vice President, Supreme Court Bar Association, Secretary and other office bearers of the Supreme Court Bar Association, President and office bearers of Supreme Court Advocates on Record Association, some of the Honorable Judges of High Court who are present today, learned senior advocates of the court who are present today, junior advocates, members of the registry, members of print and electronic media, ladies and gentlemen. It's a tough time for somebody like me. Look at the popularity of my predecessor. How am I going to don that mantle now, hereafter? <laughs> right at the outset, even before I assume office, I express my complete inability to match and go anywhere near this popularity. <laughs> the achievements of Justice Ramana are well known I have been actually placed before you. It was very heartening and very emotional to see some of the speeches which were given in the morning in court number one. And that's the real tribute because a person who demits the office, who leaves that chair for the last time, if that's the tribute which he receives, while sitting there in the chair and while just about to leave that chair. That to my mind is the most fitting tribute that a person can actually receive. So I won't repeat all of that, but two achievements which really stand out. Number one, I said in the morning, on the side of appointments, more than 250 appointments of judges of the High Court in this country. If you compare the present strength of the judges of the High Courts in this country, it is 750. So almost one third of the strength is as a result of recommendations made by the Collegium in last about, say, 14 months or so. And I also said in the morning, that there may be a time in future that perhaps large number of judges of the Supreme Court may have been those who were appointed in that year. So that's the immense contribution that, that is before you. The second facet which I noticed was in the Chief Justices and Chief Ministers Conference. The way Justice Ramana meticulously and very forcefully tried to persuade all the chief ministers and chief justices to concentrate on issues concerning infrastructure in the, in the district and lower judiciary. That was remarkable. After the conference was over, the conference went on for about two days or three days. The results of that conference are resonating now. And I must tell and share with you that as a chairperson of NALSA, one of the projects that we are seeking to implement is to have what is called Public Defender's Office or Legal Aid Defense Council. And we are insisting that in every district there must be a legal a defense counsel systems office 
which will be on the lines as public prosecutor's office. And the issue came up, very well that office would require some space. And the kind of perseverance which was shown in the Chief Justices and Chief Ministers conference that I must say that in every district the concerned states are willing to provide us minimum of 800 square feet of area to have the office of public defender in every district. And I must say that this is something which, which owes because of Justice Ramana's perseverance and the issues that he took up in Chief Justice and Chief Minister's conference. I know you all are waiting for Justice Ramana to address you. You haven't come here to listen to me. <laughs> but very well, since I have the opportunity and I know that my role is now cut to size. So therefore, let me place some of the parts which I intend to do in my next innings of 74 days. Three areas. I had a word with the office bearers of Supreme Court Bar Association and Supreme Court Advocates on the Record Association earlier in the part of the day. One, and this is where we need to take the cue from Justice Ramana and then carry forward. One area which is listing and I must assure you that we will strive hard to make listing as simple, as clear and as transparent as possible. <laughs> Number two, the area which is mentioning of urgent matters that also I will certainly look into. I will have a word with all my learned colleagues on the bench and we will certainly sort that out and very shortly you will have a clear-cut regime where any urgent matters can freely be mentioned before the respective courts. <laughs> the third area and that is of listing of matters before the constitution benches and matters which are specially referred to benches of three judges. I have always believed that the role of the Supreme Court is to lay down law with clarity, consistency and the best possible way to do it is to have larger benches as early as possible wherever the matters are referred to such benches so that the issues get clarified immediately. The matter has consistency and people are well aware of what exactly are the contours of the peculiar positions in law. So we will strive, to ha strive hard to say that yes, we will always have at least one constitution bench functioning all throughout the year. 